Welcome to Tickmill Weekly Market Outlook for week commencing the 23rd of March with me, Patrick Mundley. So the markets will continue to react to reports on the spread of coronavirus. The news flow to date has been overwhelmingly negative since the crisis began. The situation is extremely fluid and estimating the impact on the global economy is difficult as major countries continue to implement and or consider complete lockdowns to slow the spread. Weekend news reports suggest that US lawmakers are racing to agree a massive coronavirus relief package that is expected to be in excess of $1 trillion and possibly as large as $1.4 trillion. Major central banks continue to try and keep credit flowing but are having trouble keeping up with increasing funding stresses, especially US dollar funding shortages. On Friday, the Fed increased the frequency of US dollar swap line operations with other major central banks, a move that at least temporarily relieves stress in the funding markets. Traders across all asset markets will be closely monitoring credit indicators to see if the stress is being relieved or increasing. High frequency and forward-looking data will have a much greater impact on markets in the coming weeks, as everyone tries to gauge just how damaging the coronavirus has been to the global economy. Flash March PMI readings from Europe, the US and UK will provide a glimpse of the early impact in the week ahead. If China's February PMI data is anything to go by, the readings from the major Western economies won't be pretty. Specifically in the US, uh, data this week uh, includes uh, Q4 GDP, February new home sales, durable goods and PCE, but they won't capture the economic impact of coronavirus. Final University of Michigan sentiment for March release on Friday will be more significant for it will be a more high frequency read suggesting some impact of, uh, of coronavirus. From a technical perspective, the dollar index uh, continues to uh, develop in a bullish sequence. As we hold support at the 101.07 level, I'm looking for a move through the 103.50 to, uh, to test the prior cycle highs and run stops uh, towards 104. From here, there is the potential for a more significant correction, um, certainly back down to test uh, maybe as deep as the 100 psychological level and the prior breakouts at 99.90. But once again, as we test these areas, I would be looking for buyers to step in uh, as we continue to see support for the, the safe haven uh, US dollar and ultimately I would see uh, a retest of wherever we put in our cycle high this week uh, between 103.50 and, and 104. So remain uh, bullish, the, bullish the dollar with, uh, with the potential for, uh, for a correction in, uh, in the coming sessions. While we check in with the dollar, let's take a look at gold. Gold has, uh, has put in a, a reaction low here. Uh, as you can see from the charts with this double bottom on the on the four hour charts I'm using this week. Um, what I'm anticipating now is that we test up into uh, range resistance at the 1550 area. I'd be looking for sellers to re-emerge here and ultimately I see us uh, trading lower, taking out this double bottom, uh, probably testing down to the 1440 area. In Europe, the uh, German EFO for March uh, we'll also give a reading on sentiment since the coronavirus crisis began, uh, as will Eurozone flash March consumer confidence. All of, these, all of these readings are expected to start to see the impact of the coronavirus. So what I'd be looking for technically here with the Euro, if we, uh, if we can stabilise versus the, the lows uh, seen towards the back end of last week, I'd be looking for a pop up into this 10750, 108 area. Once again, I'd be expecting sellers to step in and I would anticipate we see new lows testing that 105 uh, 10550 um, pivot confluence highlighted in last uh, last Thursday's market strategy session. From there, I think we could see a, a more sustained correction, broadly in line with the, the dollar index correction that I've just highlighted. I think we could test up to 10950, maybe 1010, but uh, certainly then I'd be expecting uh, sellers to to reemerge. In the UK, main main data next week is really going to be inflation and retail sales for February. Um, again starting to see some of the uh, the, the pre-coronavirus impacts uh, come through in the data. What I'm looking for uh, from a technical perspective in the uh, in the sterling is uh, is a pop-up here at the beginning of the week, um, maybe test 118 again. But whilst we hold 119.40 as resistance, I'm looking for another low 
in sterling, um, probably to test this 112 area. And again, in, in line with this idea of a, of a correction playing out, we could then see a more sustained corrective move, um, probably testing the 121, maybe 122 area. But again, from here, I am expecting sellers to re-emerge and I ultimately see us making new cycle lows and, uh, and I have a target down, initial target down at this 110 area that I'd be, uh, I'd be looking to get tested as we hold 121, 122 as resistance. So uh, looking for bearish key reversal patterns on the, on the daily chart. Uh, in Japan, um, the main readings next week that we're going to be watching are the Flash Manufacturing PMI and Tokyo March CPI. However, headwinds to growth continue to mount, but the spread of uh, coronavirus in Japan has been somewhat subdued. Uh, from a technical perspective, uh, dollar yen looking for uh, a pullback here early in the week to retest 108.50 as support. As we find support there, I'm looking for a move up to 112.50, 113.50 even. Um, but from there, I'd be looking for a more sustained pullback and, um, and we could see prices testing down pretty quickly back towards this 106.50 area. So as 108.50 acts as support, potential to, uh, to get in on the long side there, test this 112.50, 113.50, but from there certainly be watching for bearish daily reversal patterns to set new short positions for, uh, for another leg lower here in, uh, in the dollar yen. In the Australian dollar, uh, from the Australian economic perspective, March PMIs for manufacturing services will, will really get the market's attention this week. Uh, from a technical perspective, I'm looking for the Australian dollar to, um, to consolidate against the, the near-term low on, uh, on Friday at this 157.30 area, pop up, maybe retest this resistance zone at 159.70. But once again, in line with that dollar view, I'm looking for another leg lower here, um, certainly a retest of last week's lows at, one, at the 55 cents area maybe down into that uh, mid-54 area before, again, we could witness a, a more sustained recovery in, um, in the Australian dollar. In Canada next week, there's only one, um, one macro release on tap uh, for, for the Canadian economy, and it's not really a showstopper. Um, wholesale trade will be released on Monday, nevertheless. Accounts for about 1 20th of the economy and will complete the round of releases necessary to firm up uh, January GDP growth estimates. However, obviously, the Bank of Canada has recently cut uh, rates significantly and are um, applying additional fiscal stimulus. So I don't expect the data to have really any uh, too much of a, an impact on the Canadian dollar. Uh, what I'm looking for with the Canadian dollar is um, some consolidation early in the week. Um, as we hold the 141.45 area as support, um, I'm looking to, to for, for another leg higher in the Canadian dollar. Ultimately, I think we retest this 146.65 and, and probably take that out and build in some negative divergence uh, using momentum studies to, uh, to then see a more sustained corrective pullback. So uh, the, the uh, I guess the takeaway from uh, this, this report is that what we're looking for is, um, is some support in the dollar as we pull back maybe uh, Asian Open and uh, Monday, Tuesday, but then another leg higher to, to develop throughout the week in the dollar, and that will have uh, implications for the, the dollar majors. Okay, that concludes the weekly market outlook for week commencing the 23rd of March.